Welcome to the latest episode of Griffin Hall. Uh, in the last episode, I ventured into the nether and overcame a few obstacles before I was able to establish a solid foothold there. Now, uh, I found a stable and convenient source of blazes and blaze rods, uh, and I established a safe place from which to pop into and out of the nether in order to gather uh, resources and other goodies. Uh, but I really need to start setting up the workshop and the main storage in the main base. Uh, however, I still require a few materials and I've not found them or specifically I've not found the biomes that they're normally found in. So uh, fortunately, I have a plan for that. So in this episode, the goals are few, but they involve a great deal of uh, travel and exploration. Uh, the whole point of this episode is to find additional resources, uh, especially uh, andesite, uh, cacti and palm trees. Uh, first and foremost, the workshop will have a bunch of equipment made possible by the Create mod, and that means I'll need to craft a bunch of andesite alloy, and as that name might suggest, I will need a ton of andesite. Now, I've not found any up to this point, and I mean I've found zero. Zilch. Not a nil, right? Uh, to set up my millstones to make gravel, I had to combine diorite with cobblestone to craft andesite. Now, I still have a little left over, but it won't be enough for my immediate needs, much less anything beyond that. Uh, I had originally hoped that I could find a patch of andesite uh, visible on the main world map. Uh, in previous modded games, I had found an andesite biome that was truly the mother load uh, for a game using the crate mod. Uh, I didn't have any luck finding anything similar on the current main map. So I just grabbed my tools, some food, and a bed, and now I'm headed to the nearest cave, which is literally within a single short bow shot uh, to the west. The cave has a steep drop-off, but not a sheer drop-off. And uh, there is a lava fall, which makes the area a little risky to work in. However, it is kind of, sort of, of a pain to reach up and turn it off. And while leaving it in place does make me nervous about accidentally backing into it, it also gives me some security that the local beasties will avoid it. Uh, as I work my way to the lava flow, I can see that there is a pretty sizable vein of diorite and quite a bit of andesite as well. So it looks like some of the good luck from our nether explorations have lingered into this episode as well. Now I'm not one to look at a gift horse or a gift creeper in the mouth. So I'll grab the easy to reach stuff and hightail it back to the hall to prep for our resource run. Up to this point, you may have occasionally spotted a black crystalline substance in my inventory. Uh, it's called Zagonite, and it's part of the Vscraft Machines mod, which I'm using in this world. Uh, basically, you'll receive a Zagonite shard every time you mine a copper, iron, or gold ore block. Now, I'm using the Vscraft mod uh, to get my steampunk-ish uh, airship, and I specifically chose Vscraft because the Create Aeronautics mod is probably a year or more away and Valkyrie in Skies is only available up to Minecraft 1.18.2. Uh, I did discover the Immersive Aircraft mod and I probably would have gone with that but uh, I only found out about it uh, after I started this series and after my experience in this world with mods impacting terrain generation uh, I decided to play it safe and stay with Vscraft. The Zegonite shards have really piled up, uh, but that's a good thing as it takes a lot of Zegonite to do anything worthwhile with them. Now, uh, I'll do a deep dive on this mod in the future, but for now, the only thing to remember is that the mod offers four vehicles. There's two land-based hovercraft, a mechanized boat, and a small airship. Uh, the only one I'm interested in for this world is the airship. When I'm out exploring and looking for something specific and about the size of a block or two, um, such as particular mobs, plants, or minerals, then I find that the best chance of finding them is on foot because you need to be kind of close to the thing you're looking for to see that level of detail. However, when you're looking for something really big, like say a landmark, structure, an entire biome, there really is no substitute for flying 100 blocks or so above the surface and scanning all directions at the same time. And until somebody gives me a satellite reconnaissance mod, an airship is the only way to go. Uh, besides, it is fun unless you have a tendency to fall out of your airship, and unfortunately I do, but uh, I'll probably get to that later. The expense of building these vehicles lies in the Zegonite. Uh, the material is expensive to process, and the vehicles require several components, uh, each of which requires a fair bit of Zegonite. In addition, the vehicles require fuel and maintenance. Now, while Zegonite can be used to make a particularly efficient fuel, uh, regular coal can be used instead. 
unfortunately, maintenance will specifically require service kits, but these require a non-trivial amount of zagonite as well. And simply running the machine will result in durability loss on the vehicle. Now, while there are config settings to adjust the fuel usage, there's uh, no config option to tweak or disable durability loss. And so you'll need to have a fair bit of zagonite uh, to keep the vehicle operating for any useful length of time. The ship is ready to go. Uh, you can't officially name a vehicle in this game, but I will unofficially christen it Voyager. And now we are off. Uh, I like to point out that I use Journey Map in my modded games, and it has a uh, built in waypoint functionality that I find extremely useful, uh, especially when I'm putting around in my little airship. The goal is to go to the outskirts of the known world and then travel along its edges to expand what we know. And with a little luck, we'll find a desert and a tropics biome. Uh, maybe even a little place with clean restrooms. Now the controls for these vehicles are a little tricky. Uh, there's no real downside unless you're using the airship and unfortunately I'm using the airship. The problem is this. When you are swimming or doing anything like that elsewhere in the game, the crouch key is also the down key. But if you're on a horse or in a vehicle, then the crouch key is the dismount key instead. So where this is a problem with these craft is that what goes up must come down. Um, but if you're 100 blocks or so in the air and chugging along at a good clip, pressing what naturally feels like the down button will in fact dismount you from the airship. And if you don't immediately let up on the forward key, you will exit the ship and then walk off of it. Now in most cases, you will experience what is known as rapid deceleration trauma, or in layman's terms, you will fall to your death. Uh, now, I've done this <laughs> repeatedly. It's not fun, and it's one of the major problems I see with the mod. Now, of course, the mod author is aware of this, and they have defined a separate down key, but by default, it's clustered with the other movement keys, as well as the dismount key. And so, even if you know what key to press, you can still easily accidentally press the wrong key. Now, if it were me, I would have defined a mod-specific enter-exit key for these vehicles, and left the crouch key as the down key. Though, really, the problem is a vanilla Minecraft problem because down and dismount should have always been two different keys in vanilla. But I digress. So while I'm flying in the game, uh, I need to totally focus on it and cut out any potential distractions in real life. That means I shut the door to the den, I turn off any music or videos playing in the room. Uh, in short, I go into silent running so that I can focus on not accidentally walking off my airship. And yet, I still sometimes do. Uh, the chances are pretty high that I'll do so again uh, sometime during this episode. Uh, on the other hand, the benefits of scouting from the air are worth it. Uh, even considering the hassle of returning to my ship that is hovering dozens of blocks above me in thin air. Now, if I do a face plant, we can go into the mid-air recovery strategies while I run back to get my stuff and my ship. And it's easy to see the value of traveling via airship. Uh, the view can be both spectacular and extremely informative, and that is aside from the very high cool factor. Uh, I generally only fly during the day if I'm doing recon runs, but the reason should be obvious, because it's hard to see stuff in the dark. Uh, on the other hand, if I'm running over known ground, or if I'm specifically looking for villages, then running at night can be very useful, and particularly beautiful and stunning. Since we are seeing a gorgeous sunset, that tells me it's time to set her down and sleep through the night. I usually like to land on the top of trees, uh, especially those trees with large and flat canopies so that there's uh, room for both Voyager and a bed. Now here, uh, oh geez, here we go. There are a few key points for recovering your stuff and your airship. The first is that you must travel light as you'll need the inventory space to pick up and store all the stuff you dropped when the ground attacked you. I guess that's probably true of recovering from any death in Minecraft, and you probably already know that. Uh, I typically take some food, and a fair bit of it, as I plan to sprint most of the time I'm on foot. Uh, and I need to take something to stand on. Scaffolding is preferable, but a stack or two of gravel is almost as good. And that's not something one typically needs for a body recovery. Another advantage to running with the journey map mod is that uh, deaths automatically generate a waypoint, so one should not get lost, or at least two lost. Um, in this case, I crossed a decent stretch of water during my short flight, so I will head to where I stashed my small ship. Since I named my airship Voyager, I guess I should name my small ship as well, so I will christen her the Beagle. 
Now it's turning out that I died further out than I really thought I did, uh, though this should not be a surprise to me as the waypoint has a freaking distance printed right on it. Uh, my worry is I might get bogged down on my way to the wreck and then I'll be running around in my pajamas at night with nothing but some cold chicken and a couple stacks of scaffolding to drive away the baddies that come out at night. So I might amend my advice to travel light uh, to also include a bed if you even think there's a chance that you might not be able to get back to your body in my nightfall. Uh, obviously, the first step when arriving on scene is to gather up all the scattered goodies before they despawn. Uh, then you need to take a moment to take stock of what you found and what's missing and to set it all up so that you can return to a normal operating mode. And then I need to worry about getting back into the ship. Now, using the waypoint for my death as a reference, uh, I know that I was heading due west when I walked off the ship, and so the ship should be just a few blocks due east of that waypoint. So, uh, planting a stack of scaffolding at the waypoint should get me close enough to the airship that I can right-click on it and enter it. And it worked. Now, once I'm back in the airship, the first step is to land. And since attempting to land is what got me into this mess in the first place, I need to stop and make some very deliberate moves to land the ship and then recover the scaffolding and since it is getting dark, I'll also need to sleep through the night. The absolute worst thing you can do with your airship, uh, as I have demonstrated, is to walk off it when you're 100 meters or so above the ground. Uh, the second worst thing you can do is what I've also done, and that is to set out on a long flight without any service kits. Um, hell, I didn't even make any. So I need to head back to base to use the remaining available uh, Zagonite shards to craft as many service kits as I can because my ability to repair Voyager and keep her in the air will dictate how long and far this trip will go and thus how useful the trip will eventually be. So I'm fueled up now. I have several service kits handy so barring any new mishaps we should be able to make the, uh, the complete run now. Great and there we go. Um, flying reconnaissance is only useful if you can see the freaking ground. I'm out over water and it's water that I've already explored so I'll just keep flying on instruments and hopefully the weather will clear before it gets dark. And of course not. Uh, the rain's still doing its thing and darkness has come. Uh, however, I'm still over open water in an area that I've already explored from the surface so I'll just press on. Uh, however, as I mentioned earlier, the view at night can be pretty cool. According to the map, I'm coming up on land and I would really like to see where the hell I'm going so I'm going to come down for a landing, uh, hopefully on top of a tall tree so I can safely sleep the, the night and the rain away. And just in case you miss it the first time, I'm once again demonstrating how and why one should be very careful about bringing an airship into land. Uh, the saving grace this time is that I was apparently not quite over land when I exited the craft, so the recovery procedure should go a little faster, though I need to recover from relatively deep water, so this is new. Okay, now I'm back on track and hopefully we don't have any new accidents. Uh, at this point, I am pretty paranoid about landing this thing and that might actually help. I've reached my first nav point and I found myself over scrubland and I thought that this looked like a likely place to find a bunch of andesite so I landed. However I struck out on the andesite and now I'm headed back to the ship. Uh, it was nice to run around and stretch my legs though uh, without having to climb several stories back up to the ship. Looking down below I can see into what appears to be a large cave filled with uh, big blue glowing things. I'm going to ease in a bit closer to see what this is all about. Wow, uh, I had no idea that there were big blue glowing mushrooms in the game. Uh, they must be part of one of my mods, but I have no idea which one. This will uh, probably be a place worth returning to for further exploration and study. That structure is a village built into a huge tree. Uh, I've encountered villages like this before and I absolutely love the concept. Uh, I think it would be a pre pretty cool to have several of these trees in close uh, proximity to each other with rope bridges between them. Uh, that may in fact be a future project of mine at some point. Now I've been passing over various biomes for a while now and I have transitioned back into the cold region of the map, uh, but the view is no less spectacular. 
Sometimes I will drop into a conveniently located village to grab a quick snooze. Uh, the problem with combining villages and airships, or even just landing in general, is that sometimes villagers or other entities will jump into your airship. And sometimes that's a good thing. Uh, I once got a free iron golem that way. Uh, however, most of the time it's a huge hassle. Now the mod has a device that you can craft that tickles, so to speak, unwanted passengers out of your aircraft. Uh, I consider it an essential piece of equipment. So I've been flying over frozen wastelands for over an hour now, uh, but it looks like things are warming up ahead. Uh, I'm glad, as the deserts I found among the cold biomes are filled with gravel and have no cacti. Uh, I think I'm much more likely to find hot deserts and tropical islands in more temperate zones. Now I've been in the air for a couple of hours now, uh, of real time, and I finished my first lap around the known world. And though I've seen a lot of beautiful landscapes and a few interesting features and structures, uh, I have yet to complete any of my stated goals. Now it looks like I'm crossing back into the cold and snowy part of the world again. Uh, while I'm not likely to find cacti or palm trees here, there is still a non-trivial chance that I'll find uh, some source of andesite. And of course, there is the excitement of discovering the unknown. And with this mix of mods, who knows what in the hell I'm going to find. Over the course of this trip, I've been occasionally stopping to repair Voyager so that I can continue the trip. Uh, but I figured at some point you might want to see how this actually works. Uh, it's pretty straightforward, and the best service kit I can craft will restore 100 durability. Now, the base model airship has a total durability of 250. Now, you can upgrade the vehicle to have greater durability, but those upgrades are pretty expensive in terms of materials. Oh, that's a real beaut, and it's probably part of Young's Better Desert Temples. Uh, it certainly is impressive from the air. And I would imagine that it will be a lot of fun to go in there and uh, unlock whatever secrets the mod authors dreamed up. And it would appear that there's a second pyramid within line of sight of the first. So I suppose that means that I'll need to come up here and explore both of them on the same trip. Uh, it will be interesting to see how they're similar and if or how they are in any way different. Ooh, this ice spire is interesting and it looks like it's very much a structure with a, uh, a defined pathway winding up on the outside. And presumably there are rooms or contents to be found in or on the spire. Uh, this is a place that I will also need to come back and explore at a future date. Uh, I'm coming out of the frozen regions again. And judging by the number of service kits I have left, I will probably not make it back uh, to the cold regions again on this trip. Uh, in fact, it's becoming increasingly likely that I may finish this trip without actually accomplishing any of my stated goals. Uh, on the positive side, I saw a lot of great stuff, and it's all mapped, so I have plenty of stuff to check out when the time's right. Now, while on these airborne reconnaissance missions, I often stop to look at the map for clues about possible places to stop. And on the last such stop, uh, I found what appears to be a cave entrance that the map describes as diorite caves. Now, one of my stated goals for this trip is to find a lot of andesite, but finding a lot of diorite is pretty much the same thing, and with a name like Diorite Caves, I suspect that this will take care of our andesite needs uh, at least for the foreseeable future. So I set up a temporary waypoint, and I'm headed to check it out now. So I've landed and found that there is indeed plenty of diorite, but it's in a deep and steep hole. Now I'm going to work my way in cautiously and start quarrying diorite, I will combine it with cobblestone to create andesite, and this will be more than enough for creating the workshop, though I will undoubtedly need to uh, return again and again even after that project's finished. So I will add a permanent waypoint to make it much easier to return. And I am almost out of service kits, so I think I will hit my last nav point and then head back to the hall. Uh, as far as meeting my established goals go, um, the trip was an almost complete failure. Uh, however, as far as discovering inspiration goes, it was a complete success. Um, either way, it's good to be coming home and getting settled back in. So uh, when I was up there flying around, uh, I had a lot of time to think about uh, things. And one of the things I've come to realize is that to fully integrate my storage system, uh, at least as I've designed it, I will need a lot more storage controllers. And generally the material for the controllers is cheap, uh, except for the gold and the quartz. Now I actually have a tidy little stockpile of gold thanks to the mineral chance mod and actually very little else to use the gold on. But I am running low on quartz. 
So the next episode may require a return to the nether to uh, suck up as much quartz as I can find. Now I had flirted with the idea of taking Voyager to the nether, uh, but besides the gas and the fireballs, I fear that I may be highly likely to walk out of my airship and plunge into a lava sea. Uh, therefore, I think that I will remain a pedestrian in the nether. I will also tweak my workshop and storage design to use a slightly different uh, color coding for my storage system. Now I can use birch instead of the palm, which gives me a very pale yellow versus a nice, rich, deep yellow. Uh, however, I have no other green alternatives for storage drawers, so I will probably go with the dark purple from Umbran Trees. However, if I'm, uh, if I'm lucky, I might be able to catch the Wandering Merchant sometime soon and possibly buy some cactus off him. And from that, I can start a cacti farm and stick with my original plan for green drawers. Uh, it's kind of unusual, but now I'm actually looking forward to visits from the Traveling Merchant. And uh, that wraps it up. Thank you for joining me on this expedition. And I wish you and yours good health, good spirits, and a touch of good fortune. Uh, until next time, cheers. <laughs>